What's up, friends? This is Jazz bringing you a Halloween special again. It's not a animated, you know, video. It's not a cartoon review. You might get one this month. You might not. It may only be this video. Let's just say the words. Are you afraid of the dark? Now, are you afraid of the dark was a children's horror show where... What do they call, what are they, do they call them? I don't know what they call different, like, mo different episodes or different stories. But, I might put in the title card what it's known as. Anthology. An anthology series, in a way, but not. Each, each episode, each episode creates a new story, which is told by kids around the campfire. Now, I'm bringing this up. This is not going to be a video specifically on the whole Are You Afraid of the Dark series. There's just one particular episode since it's Halloween that I thought I would bring up. Now, yes, they're all supposed to be scary to small children, and they are. They probably would be when you were, like, 7 to 10, maybe. But this episode right here, even at my age, is a bit creepy. Okay, more than a bit creepy. This episode is the final episode of season five, which would have been the can't last episode ever of Are You Afraid of the Dark Show is rebooted for the sixth and seventh seasons. Tale of the Night Shift. Guys, the first thing I can say, what were they thinking? This this episode could easily make a PG-13 rating nowadays. I think maybe, I don't know whether they knew this would be their last episode, because if they did, they, they, but they sh might as well have, because they are probably say, hell, we're not going to be shown anymore anyway, so let's go all out. And give the, and make the kids need counselors for years. Now you're thinking, what is so bad about the episode? Well, if I'm allowed to, YouTube copyright, let me insert this clip here. I don't think we should scary, isn't it? I mean, really, the 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 the, make, the the effects, the makeup, everything is horrifying. Like, this, I honestly think the scariest monster I've seen in the episodes I've watched so far. Now, I haven't completely watched the whole series yet. I've watched this in episodes through different seasons, you know, randomly as I want it. But I already knew this episode was the last episode of the original Are You Afraid of the Dark? So I wanted to check this out for that reason. I knew it was so scary. I was, it was brought up that it was really scary. And they aren't lying. The others who have reviewed this episode are not lying. Now, as an adult, you, it, it maybe not as, as bad as if you were a small child. That's the thing. Anyone, they say that this show would be too scary for kids under seven. Okay, then. Let's remove, let's say there are cool aunts or grandparents that allow kids under to watch this show. And let's remove the, anyone under the age of seven from the equation. Eight seven-year-olds would be horrified to see this. Like, this episode, I think, could easily be 13, maybe 11 at the youngest and older. Because... This episode would be, like, it, I would put it, I, I would put a message on this episode to say any children under the age of 12 to stay away from it. Because it, it, it acts all innocent at first, and then suddenly they turn into this horrified vampire, as I showed you before. Holy crap. I'm 25 years old, and I'm nearly, I nearly... Yeah, I know. You've known I have Edward, and you all tease me about my penguin. I was holding it right close to me. Is how scared I was. Like, okay, there are worse things, because I can't stand jump scares. Most jump scares really weren't that bad in this. So I wasn't scared like I would be at an adult-rated movie, of, like a horror genre. We'll just put it this way. It is tame compared to the horror movies for adults nowadays, but if you're comparing it to something a seven-year-old would be technically allowed to watch, this is way too much. 
Like, also the fact that a hospital, okay, hospital's already an unpleasant place to be in. I mean, no one likes to go there because usually they're, the only time that any happiness comes from being in a hospital is when you're in labor to give birth to a child. And even then, that's painful, giving birth. I mean, I've never been given birth, but my point is, even that's painful, but it's, it's something joyful comes in the end. Any other time you're in a hospital, it's not at all pleasant. So imagine kids were already afraid of going to the hospital and getting sick. And now imagine that added, the vampire adding to the equation in a, in a setting that is already unnerving. A kid would never want to go to any hospital again after seeing this. I mean, I already have, like, I'm not too bad with hospitals. Like, it's not a pleasant place, though, but, I mean, and I know, like, I know vampires are not real. Well, I, I really hope they aren't. Like, and even, like, the undead, but kids aren't old enough to judge that. They'll, they'll, they'll link this to the hospital and have a bad connection with any hospital setting. Like, there's just so much wrong with it. You know, not just, not just that. There's this scene where this character, Felix, which is one, one of the janitors there, who was also a potential, okay, we'll just say the main character's name is Amanda. She's a candy striper. And, the other main character is Colin, which he, I think he's getting his tonsils out is what he said, and he really likes Amanda, I will just say, and he tries to score a date with her. And Felix, is at the beginning, is another guy that's like a third or fourth main character that's important in this episode. At the very beginning, we see that horrifying vampire attack Felix. Back to my point. They open the morgue door to see a body laying on the table, covered in a sheet. Now, that's horrifying enough, right? They remove it to see Felix laying there, where in the horrified expression, like, not only do they have a horrifying vampire, like, literally, the scariest thing I've seen in a kid's show so far, they have the perception of what is in a morgue. They show a morgue to children. And I'm saying, he's dead, he's dead. Oh my god. Like, what is say, I'm just very surprised how far they went with this episode. As I said, maybe they knew this was their last episode, that they were going to be canned, so why not throw it all out there and scar kids for life? Because what do they have to lose? Or maybe this was the reason they originally were canceled. But then again, why, if they didn't know they were going to be canceled, why would they do such a mixed, horrendous episode? No, when I say horrendous, I don't mean like anything was bad acting wise or whatever. It was, it was par or even better than what they usually do. But when I say horrendous, I mean horrifying, her horrifyingly horrendous. Like, it's it's like they were trying to get fired or try to lose their job. Cause I swear, like they're thinking, okay, we've done this show for five seasons now. Getting kind of tired of this. How can we guarantee our viewer ratings to drop? Let's add a horrifying vampire in here. Show the little kitties what's inside a morgue, and the parents will send out. Letters of outrage. They will have to be canned. Okay, I know that sounds a silly assumption, and it probably just is an assumption. Because, I mean, a, year, a, year, a couple years later, it came back in, like, 1997 or 898. It came back for two more seasons. I guess it was popular. The DVD sellers or the video sales were popular and everything. So they brought it back. Like, Okay, you would think, but a horrifying episode is actually refreshing, right? Yeah, it it sort of is if an adult is watching it. But at the time, guys, the target age was seven. Okay, seven plus. But it means there was young kids watching this. 
So imagine if the young kids got through all the rest of the Are You Afraid of the Dark episodes, they were that horrified, they were just spooked enough, and finally this comes along and they think, oh, it's just, it's going to be spooky, but it's not going to be too bad, because it's never gone that far before. And then suddenly, <sighs> like, again, if you see that visual, it is horrifying. Horrifying. Now, I know as I said, I'm a 25-year-old. I mean, compared to other things I've seen in my in the last few years, it is, a, like, it's a cupcake. But if I was looking at this as a child, I would have run out of my room, hugged my aunt, and cry saying, a vamp like, if I go to a hospital, will a vampire get me? Yeah, I could picture any kid thinking that. But in all honesty, everything turns out well in the end. We'll just say the vampire who was really that new candy stripper, what they call Margo. She, you know, was disguised and everything. Once all that is taken care of, she's killed. Felix was her first victim and became a vampire. But he fought it. The other thing I thought, though, so reminded me of Twilight in a way. That, well, I know that sounds funny. Not, not the whole premise. I don't mean that. I mean, the one thing I think about when I see Felix is Jacob Black. The one that obviously will not get Amanda, but cares for her a lot. That he's able to fight his urges to protect her. And, and Colin, who is the other guy trying to get a date, which, spoilers, he does in the end. He gets a second date, because they kind of consider that her, their first date, trying to take on the vampire. And so, in other words, she's, she's going to end up with Colin in the end. So, Felix like, was finally kind of fully transformed in a way, and he's trying to stop Colin from destroying the coffin. And he said, I know you're still in there. He said, we can both, if you want to save Amanda, fight it. And he was able to fight off his vampire urges to help him destroy the coffin. And that kind of reminded me of Jacob. I mean, I know Jacob was not a vampire. He was a werewolf. But he, the point is, he cared for the main character a lot. The only difference is he hasn't really been fighting with Colin before her. So that was the difference, but he had urges, like a monster within himself he had to fight for the sake of someone that he cared about. And I, mean, I do like it how that was portrayed. That was really well done. Bass said, it's just too creepy for a kid's show rated 7 and over. If it was maybe rated 10 and up or something, like maybe. I would consider that a, a little bit better than spookier episode for that series. It, 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 it's just out of place with the rest of the series that I've seen, you know, up to this point. It wasn't scary enough to really, like, the rest of the series was so far was not really scary enough to me. To I mean, I've seen one with monsters and people changing and everything, and they didn't even phase me. This this one thing, though, just, just bothered me. For some reason, I don't know, I can't really point it, even though I kind of brought out reasons why it would scare a child. But, will this say, it's one of those episodes, like, I'm trying to think. I've never watched a series now, I gotta tell you, but anyone who remembers watching Ghost Rider, that series of different monsters, another anthology series, in a way, and all the other episodes they were able to, kids were able to get through, but then there's this one episode, I don't know whether it was the finale, or no, it was, it was an episode about, what was it? Goo. I think it was about a sub slime creature. And, everyone remembers it scarring them. Like, it's what, it, like, this episode of Are You For Your Dark is kind of like that episode of Ghost Rider. It's something that if a kid sees, they'll probably always have it in the back of their head. Which is good and bad. Like, good that they'll remember their show that way. Bad because they'll have a lot, they'll have to pay a lot of therapy bills. By the way, guys, if this was a different video, I know, but I just wanted to bring my two cents in this episode. I never watched, like, I'm going to start watching them maybe in a row. 
just to compare. But so far, this is the scariest one I've seen. I've seen pretty scary ones, like like evil monsters, horrifying things that happen, like in everything. So anyway, if you enjoyed this Halloween special, give it a big thumbs up, and I will see you guys in my next video.